we're out of YouTube jail, folks. That's right, longest week of our lives. But we're out, and we're back, and we're here to talk about this Australia situation and how easily their rights have just been stripped from them and how we can prevent this from happening in the United States. Why it hasn't happened already is because of our Constitution and how we're going to use that same Constitution to go ahead and change the world. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! I don't want you to write. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. If the whole world got crazy! Am I the only one around here who gives a shit about the wrong? You have the luxury of not knowing what I know. I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window Open it and stick your head out and yell, I'm as bad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. So we're free from YouTube jail. Finally got out. It's been a long week, but now we're back in action and I'm really fired up to get into this Australia story. It, I would have dropped it earlier, but, you know, things happen. They don't give you pencils in, in, uh, in prison. So. Now that we're out, let's go ahead and get ourselves jumped into this. So if you haven't been into what's going on with the Australia story, then you should be, okay? So Australia has been completely locked down. It's a hot mess. I don't know what the deal is and why the government, well, I have some ideas. But in the end, I don't know why the government is overreacting the way it is. Certainly the Australian people do not understand why the government is overreacting the way it is. They came out last week. They did a press conference after locking down Sydney for a good eight weeks. Sydney is still the leading, the leading purveyor, I guess, or the leading spreader of the virus with the most cases. So the question then becomes, how do you look at that? Do you say to yourself, hmm, we've locked them down for eight weeks and the virus is still cranking? Do you say, maybe lockdowns aren't all that effective? Perhaps we should stop destroying our society and try and find a different way to deal with this. Or you could look at it, as most governments always do, and say, hmm, well, if lockdowns aren't working, then we must not be locking down enough. So the government only has, it's important to understand, the government only has one mindset. And, you know, there's an old saying, when all you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail, right? So this, this is kind of how governments operate. So, and if it's a job that calls for a screwdriver, nah, we're nailing it anyway. And, and this is just how it goes. Now, this government's gotten huge. It's out of control. It's, its control over the people is absolutely unstoppable. And as much in the United States as we might have thought that, you know, oh, this is, and it is out of control here. Let me not, let me not devalue that. Our government has far exceeded its size capacity. However, because of our constitution and because of the way that we're drawn up, it's difficult for the government to invade into certain areas. Now, they have violated just about everything I can think of coming up to this point in history. So I'm not gonna get into details about it. I'm just gonna say our government has, has violated most, most everything that I can imagine. And in the end, they're going to continue to grow the same way they did in Australia. Now, these people, I want you to take a listen to some of the some of the stuff that there was said in this press conference that they did it, it was it's pretty disturbing this guy this police chief or whatever the title form is in australia probably should have looked that up didn't not really relevant but in the end this guy is enjoying this way too much way too much so this is him right here i want you to hear he's going to explain what the new lockdown rules are and how they're going to implement this and what their intentions are to enforce it. And just look at the facial expressions that he makes as he goes. Because it's clear to me anyway that this guy is like drunk with power right now. Like he's totally digging the fact that he's on the podium. He's got all the cameras on him. He's showing, he, he looks like a boss, etc. Morning Premier, Deputy Premier, ladies and gents. 800 tickets overnight, 50 charges for breaching 
the health orders that brings this week's total to nearly three and a half thousand since Operation Stay at Home uh, commenced. I'm going to give an example of that. Four men this morning at Dremoyne were stopped at 2 a.m. and gave the excuse of exercising. They were from the LGAs of concern. They were given $17,000 worth of tickets and sent packing home. Did you hear how he says that? Like, like, did you pick up on how he explained that? So, like, let me just give you an example of what I mean, people, right? Like, like okay, citizens, in case you were thinking you were just going to go out and tell us you were exercising, ha, 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 we picked up four people last night who tried to use that excuse, and they got seven grand in fines and were sent home packing, right? Like, this guy's just a jerk. This doo-doo just needs to go away. Like, I, I can't deal with this dude. But like he goes on, and, and and him and his power. We got special powers. We got this power. We're happy to have our powers. This is the guy who was advocating for these powers, and now he's like on the podium bragging about being granted. The eight hundred tickets written, nearly five hundred of those were for people leaving the house without a reasonable excuse, and this is why, but well, certainly one of the reasons the police minister and I have asked for these additional powers, including the curfew. Um, can I say, firstly, police now have the power, if they find someone outside of an LGA of concern without a reasonable excuse, to issue them not just an infringement, but an order to return home, which is extremely important. Equally, if someone enters an LGA of concern without excuse, not only will they be fined, they will be sent home and they will be have to self-isolate for 14 days. Now, this is all about stopping the transmission of the virus from the areas of concern, those 12 LGAs, into the rest of Greater Sydney and certainly uh, regional New South Wales. Police Commissioner now also has power to declare a residential apartment a risk, and we can lock that apartment down until New South Wales Health has conducted the appropriate and I say two other permit systems will come in later next week, and that is for any authorised worker leaving the LGAs of the concern, you must have a permit. And additionally, anyone entering the LGAs of concern for the reason of work must carry a permit. The you hear this, dude? No, he's serious. He's, he's as serious as a heart attack. This guy is just absolutely... Police lovely. Minister and I have been extremely supportive of these powers and we certainly welcome them. We will continue to drive operations, stay at home. I, I want to I just... I mean, you, you see what I'm saying, I hope. Leave, leave some comments below if you think I'm misreading this guy, but I can tell you this guy is enjoying this job. He's enjo I'm not saying he's enjoying people dying or, or anything like that, but he's definitely enjoying these additional powers that have been handed to him and he feels super important, and he has every intention of lashing out. I, I can tell you he's already bragging about it. You know, how does he know these guys weren't exercising last night? How does he know that? Like, how do you value it? Was it the way they were dressed? Was it, like, like how does someone know if, if, if you list something that's an authorized reason to be out, and someone says, okay, well, then I want to do that, and I, I need to do that, so I'm going to go out. And then what if you guys decide, no, we don't believe you? And they still get the seven thousand dollar fine. It's just crazy. So you would think, with all these draconian measures, that the death toll was just ridiculous. That there were at least, at least a few thousand a month. At least, at least, even though a few thousand a month, comparative to these populations, is not that crazy. It's still that's concerning. That's concerning, right? So you got a, a population of five five million people, five point three million in Sydney. You know, you get a few thousand dying for one specific virus in, in a month and it's a new variant and you don't know what's going on and maybe you know you would think well it can't just be hitting elderly people because then they would just be focusing on protecting elderly people why would they be doing this to everybody else but let's let's take a look because they do get into just how many people are dying the covid related deaths to 65 since the, since june 16 and the number of lives lost to the pandemic to, to 121. I want so to put this in perspective, depending on at what point in the future you might be watching this video, this video is being put out about two months after June 16th, actually two and a half months. So they've lost 
they've lost 63 people in two and a half months. So it's less than 30 people a month, okay? That's what we're talking about here. And they're all, I guarantee you, the four, they announced four of them that recently passed. They were all 80, 80, 80, and 70. And they didn't get into their comorbidities, but I guarantee you that they had them. And because they always do. They almost always do. And, and it's just, you know, that's just how the virus is. This is that kind of virus that just takes out old people. Like if you're fragile and you have a weak immune system and, you know, you're susceptible to this sort of thing, that's what's going to happen. Okay? But we're talking about 60 people in a population of 5.3 million. And these are the measures that they take to knock this out. Well, then the hospitals must all be overrun, right? I mean, they must be. I mean, there must be something going on, right? So that there must be hospitals overrun. To, to but indicate um, that I strongly support this comprehensive bundle of new measures which complement other actions. We've currently got 470 cases in hospital and 80 people in ICU. Okay. So you got a little over 400 people, or no, almost 500 people. I think she said 480. Somewhere between four and 500 people in the hospitals and, and 80 in ICU. So, and I think after watching the whole thing, I think they had like seven or so that were incubated or whatever. But regardless, these are numbers that are not absolutely blow away, staggering. You're talking 80 people now. 80 people. Again, the population, just Sydney, not counting Victoria, we double it if we count Victoria, just Sydney is 5.3 million. You've shut down, you've destroyed the lives of all of these people to protect them from a virus that killed 60 people in two and a half months. And they were all elderly. Try and explain that to a young business owner. That's tough. That's tough. That sure is tough. My point about this whole thing is they let their government get out of control. There's just no excuse for this. Type. There's ways to take precautions that don't include this madness that they're putting these people through. They went ahead and they pepper sprayed a 12-year-old girl because her sister or someone in their group was, sh was getting arrested for shopping without a mask on, and grocery shopping, and she, had, she was standing there and trying to say, hey, leave her alone, leave her alone. And they frickin' maced her or, or pepper sprayed her. They pepper sprayed a 12-year-old and me. A 12-year-old. Pepper sprayed a 12-year-old pepper sprayed. Because she's a threat to all of these cops. This is a 12-year-old kid. They couldn't have subdued her. I, I mean, this is the stuff that's going on in the streets of Australia right now. These people are serious. These police are serious. Now, I could tell you in the U.S., at least here in, in California, and I, don't, I can't speak for the crazy parts of California, the L.A.s and the San Francisco's and Sacramento's, but I could tell you in the Inland Empire, they, they were like, we ain't listening to Gavin Newsom. <laughs> they said, we ain't listening to this, dude. And he wasn't even trying to do dr this kind of draconian stuff. He was just trying to get people to wear a mask or like, or, you know, try and social distance or whatever. You know, telling businesses they can't open. We had a restaurant open. Nobody stopped them. They were like, tell Gavin to go get him. That, that's how it rolls in Freeland, right? But in the end, that's not how it rolls in Australia. So now, and, and if it ever came to it, we would be counting on, on our local, you know, on our police forces and such to just have the wherewithal to not take orders to turn on the citizenry. I, I'm confident that our police will, but I think that brings us to the defund the police segment and why they want that so bad. If, if we'll tie everything in folks, we'll tie everything in because that's exactly why defund the police is a movement because they can't, if it ever comes to the point that, that they do become successful, then they can't use the police force. They won't be able to use the police force. Same thing with the military. That's why they're purging military. Patriot extremism is the term they coined, right? We posted the DOD document up to our website under that episode. That's not a coincidence, okay? They coined that term because they need to get rid of patriots in the, in the military. As bizarre and anti-productive as that sounds, what they need are more woke people. They need people, they're, like I said, two to three generations have been fully indoctrinated. That's who they want in the military because they want people in the military who absolutely believe that American citizens who don't agree with the government 
are extremists. See how this works? They need the same thing for the police force. They need people in the police force where they want these community organizing police forces because we're basically saying, let's put Antifa as the police. That's pretty much what, they, what they're thinking. And as bizarre as that sounds, there are some cities they're making headway with this stuff. So it's up to us to be vigilant, right? And, and on that note, how do we do this? How do we stop all of this madness from happening? Well, we're fortunate, unlike Australia, we have the Constitution of the United States of America, and we had a very, very good set of founding fathers who thought this stuff through well enough that if they were living, if they came here today, if they got in a time capsule and showed up today, they would not be shocked at all at what they see from the federal government. They would probably giggle, ask what year it is, and, and start exchanging money over who took bets as to how long it would take for the federal government to get this big, this sloppy, this out of control, and this destructive. So that's, that's what the founding fathers, in my opinion, what their impression would be if they just time portaled into today. But because they knew this, because they had that wisdom, they put in Article 5. Article 5, if you're not aware of it, we advocate it all the time here. We're going to do it again now. I actually have a couple more videos, at least one more, coming out that's going to go into it, get into some of the arguments for and against. But Article 5 is the state's ability to amend the Constitution of the United States. You may not be aware, the states do not require the federal government's input to amend the Constitution of the United States. So if you're familiar with the basic process and how it's been done throughout history, it's been two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate. They both agree on it. They pass it. It gets ratified by three-quarters of the states. Well, the same process works with a convention as well. It's just in Article 5, they also give the method of the states, two-thirds of the states getting together. That would be 34 states getting together the same way two-thirds of Congress does. In this scenario, Congress is not necessary. If two-thirds come in, that's 34 states. They then call the convention. Congress has to call the convention. They're not asked about it. They don't vote on it. Nothing. They just have to call the convention. States all get together, send their delegates with specific instructions on what they can, what they can discuss and what the states will support. And right now, there are three of those things on the table. Fifteen states have already passed the resolutions. There are well more than 20 on the table that are sitting in hold and in limbo. Most of those, if not all of them, are in Republican-run states. And in the end, it's Republicans who are actually, it's, it's rhino Republicans who are actually slowing this process down. So it, you can check out how to go ahead and, and get yourself active to get these people to move. You can do that on our website. We've organized it by all the states. All the states are separated into categories of either having it done already, working on getting it done with, with something written in on the table, or haven't gotten anything done at all. Once you go and you click into your state, you can then see what the actual resolution that they passed is or what the resolution that they have on the table is. Now, there are three issues that they're all holding up that we're trying to get through. And the reason these three things were chosen is because these are three particular things that the federal government will never do on their own. They absolutely have to be imposed on them by the people because the government will never do it to themselves. The first one is term limits for Congress. I don't think I even need to say anything else there. It's pretty self-explanatory. I think even the left and the right will be in full agreement on this one. The second one, a balanced budget amendment. They can't write checks that they don't have the money for, right? If we, if we have a situation that we can't, uh, you know, th that we can't afford, we just don't buy it, right? It, and you get the irresponsible person who keeps taking out credit on the credit card and they end up going bankrupt. Well, for an individual, he's on his own. We can't be doing that to the entire country. The reality of the matter is it's okay to take out the credit card in a in time of crisis. If there needed to be overspending because a massive hurricane hit the coast and our budget was like lined up perfectly as if there was no hurricane or the budget money that we put aside for hurricanes got overspent, that's understandable. What's not understandable are all of these cartoon projects that this money gets blown on, all of the pork that gets stuffed into every bill that this money gets blown on. We got this infrastructure bill. The majority of that money is not going to infrastructure. That kind of stuff is unacceptable. 
and the balanced budget amendment will address it. Lastly, we've got overreach. Government overreach, mostly through regulatory agencies. This is a big one. But to, to prevent the Marxist movement, this is a big one. Okay, because this is how this is the overreach of the executive branch. Okay, that's what regulatory agencies are. They're an executive, they're the executive branch's way to get around Congress. If they can't get something passed, they get a regulation through. To them, it's the same thing. They're punishable laws that unelected officials are, are writing. It is completely unconstitutional. And apparently, our brilliant minds in government can't figure that out, so we need to go ahead and explain it to them and maybe give them a box of crayons so that they can color in the amendment words as they go, because they clearly are having under comprehension issues. But the most beautiful part about this, folks, is that all it takes, that we don't have to go to war, we don't have to make the Second Amendment our most important right, because this is available to us. This is a tool that the founders left in here for this very moment in history. This very moment. The only reason it exists. The only reason. Because they fully understood that there would come a point where the federal government would no longer be able to police itself. And the bottom line is the state was set up not for the federal government to be running the show. It was set up for the states to be running the show. Why? Because the states are closer to the people. That's why. And that is our biggest offense against Marxism, period. Because the states have to buy in. There is no all-powerful federal government. It feels that way right now. But a, but a few com constitutional amendments later, and it won't be feeling so much like that anymore. That you can count on. So get yourself active. Get to www.thepatriotthinktank.com. Check out where your state is. See what's going on with that. Then take your link over to find your representative. It'll take you to the Convention of States website. These guys are phenomenal. They will go ahead and you can sign the petition there. They will actually send a letter out to your representative on your behalf. They will go ahead and show you ways that you can act and take action to help get things going in the state that you live in. It's absolutely necessary. It's absolutely essential that everybody engage. Whether it's just a social media warrior or, or you're out there trying to, trying to hustle you know, and, and get out there in the field and, and sell it to people and convince people on the idea, however you can contribute, whatever you can do, start a YouTube channel. Do whatever you can do to help persuade people and educate them. And it's not even persuasion. It's just about educating them on what it is, why it's necessary. They'll agree on their own. This is the way, folks. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. So I look forward to you guys tuning in for my next one that I put out. Should be in a week or so. Uh, we're going to get into some of the arguments against it. It's kind of a remake of what Jack had done in, in his five-part series. They're all five really quick series. You can go catch that as well. It's very well done, very articulate, very to the point, and very easy to understand. And it, it helps to arm you from some of the things you might confront. So we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you to all of our subscribers. We appreciate every single one of you. We're growing, starting to grow exponentially again now that the channel's back open. So we're happy for that and grateful for that. So if you've made it this long, just make sure that you go ahead and click that bell get the alerts when we're coming out with new material. This is the way, folks. You've got to do it. Get it together. Get yourself active. Rant over. And like that.